In this video, we're gonna learn how to quickly take one person's face off and put it on somebody else's in Photoshop using the lasso tool, some masking, and two different ways to match skin tones. Let's go. The first thing we have to do is we have to take Charlie Sheen's face off. You wanna take his face? Yes. His face. So to do that, we're going to use the lasso tool, the third one down over here. If you don't see this one, right click and then select the lasso tool. Then we're going to go up here and make sure our feather is at about 10. This is a free drawing selection tool, so you can just draw wherever you want to select. And we are just going to select a rough outline around his face. And it'll look like this with the dotted line here. Next, we're gonna go over to Edit, and we are going to Copy or Control-C. Then we're gonna go over to our other image, and we're gonna go Edit and Paste or Control-V. Now we have both images on the same document. It appeared here as Layer 1. Let's name it, uh, let's name this one Sheen for Charlie Sheen's face. So the next thing we have to do is get the face in place. So we are going to have to rotate it, and resize it and maybe warp it. So first thing, we're gonna go over to Edit and we are going to go to Free Transform or Control T. And in this one, we can resize and if you go outside the box at the corner, that's where you can rotate. So as we get it kind of close in place here, let's make sure we go over to Opacity and let's slide our, opa pa bleh bleh, slide our opacity down to like 64, 65 so we can see both sets of eyes. Okay, so, and then just match up one eye and then start resizing. So I'm gonna look at the eye and I'm gonna look to see I've matched up the mouth right here. The nose looks pretty good. Uh, and I'm just gonna make sure on the chin, yeah, it looks pretty good. So my image lined up fairly well. And if that's the case, just click check and you're good to go. If your image is not lined up very well, if it's still like, kinda, if it kinda feels like your image is too big or the chin's too big or the eyes are wide apart, something, then you're now gonna go over to Edit, Transform, and go up to Warp. Now, in here, there's some more advanced options to set your own lines. For now, we're just gonna look at a three by three grid, and whatever you select on a dot here, you can move parts of the image around. So you can kind of warp it and bend it to where you need it. I'm not gonna do that, because mine was already good. If you want to unclick on a dot, just hold Shift and click on it, and it'll deselect. If you want to select a bunch of dots, so a whole section, hold shift and draw a box around those. And now you can manipulate that whole section together. So you can kind of bend it, move it, and like shrink it or extend it, whatever you have to do to make it fit. Okay, so I am, when you're done, you can click that check again. I'm just gonna undo the warp to put mine back because I like that better. Next, let's go over and let's put our opacity back to 100 and we can see that it extends past like into the hair and stuff. So now we have to erase that extra stuff. To do that, we're gonna go over here and this little rectangle with the circle in it, that's a mask. We're gonna put a mask on that layer. And what a mask does, it allows you to use a brush to, when you're using a black brush, that allows you to use it as an eraser or cover stuff up. And if you flip to a white brush, now you can bring it back or reveal what you had already erased. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that the size of our brush is, you know, just a little bit bigger than our eye and the hardness, let's just keep it around like 20 to 30, something like that. And we're gonna start on the black brush. So you can toggle between white and black down here. And we're just gonna paint over the hair to bring, to cover up the Charlie Sheen's, like the blurry part of his face there and reveal some of that hair that was in there. Let's go around the chin just to make sure. Go up here around the ear and around this hairline up there. Okay, so for me, that looks pretty good. You might have to go back and forth. Like if you accidentally do too much in a place, then just go back to white and just put it back to where you want it. So take your time to refine that edge and, uh, and get it right. And now we just have to match our skin tones. So I'm gonna show you two different ways. The first one is gonna be manually. So that's down here, and we're gonna use adjustment layers. So if you click on this little half circle, kind of cut in half thing here, and usually when you're doing these, you're dealing with 
uh, the color, changing the color, maybe the lightness and darkness, and maybe how much color. Sorry, I should have rearranged those. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add a color balance. And you can see if I use this slider and slide it back and forth, it affects both images, this one and the background. So I don't want that. I want it to just impact the face. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to color balance here. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna create a clipping mask. And what that does is that means it only affects this layer, the one right below it and nothing else. Okay, so now I can take this slider and it's a little bit too red. So I'm just gonna take some of the red out of it to start. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna take some color away here too. So hue saturation with this one. I'm gonna right click again and create clipping mask and I'm gonna desaturate a little bit. I'm gonna take some of it out. And you know what, I'm gonna go back to color balance. I'm just gonna add just a touch of yellow into it too. I can see that there is a little bit more yellow in this one. Okay, and then the next one, like I said, we're gonna go here and we are going to add a levels, okay? And what levels is, is this allows, this brings your darks to be darker, this slider. This brings your lights or your whites to be lighter. And then down here, this makes your lights darker and this makes your darks lighter. But the only one we're really gonna touch for this image I'm actually just gonna move this slider just a little bit to the right, just to contrast a little bit. But you can see that that is impacting the entire image. So I need to remember to go down here, right click and create clipping mask. So it's just on the face. And remember when you're adding these, your sliders are gonna go different than mine. They're not gonna be the same as mine because your image will have different skin tones and to match them is gonna be much different than what I needed to do. You just gotta play around a little bit until you get what you like. Okay, so that's method one, that would be done, complete. Now I'm gonna show you method two. So to delete all these adjustment layers, I'm gonna click on the top one, and then I'm gonna click on the bottom one. I'm gonna hold shift and click on the bottom one, and that's gonna select everything between those, and I'm just gonna trash them. Yes, and that's gonna take us back to our original image. Okay, so for this one, all we're gonna do is we are gonna add another adjustment layer. This time we're gonna go right to curves, and when this window pops up, we're gonna make sure that instead of being on the mask, we are over here on the icon part of it, and we're gonna select the middle dropper here. So this one, if you stay over it, it's this, the image to set gray point. We're gonna click on that one, and I like to bring, come over here and pick up my color palette to have it open, and we're just gonna pick kind of a neutral uh, tone out of this image, okay? So we're gonna click on that one, and we're gonna click OK. If you see a window that pops up that says like um, set these as defaults, just click no on that one. Next, we're gonna click what we think is a neutral tone on this face. So I'm gonna click right there. Now, it's gonna potentially turn a fairly wonky color and that's okay because it's kind of offsetting the color that we already have. So that's perfectly fine. Okay, next we're gonna go over to our mask now we're gonna click on the mask side of this adjustment layer on the curves. We're gonna go Control I, and that's gonna fill it with black. Okay, so that now is on that mask. It's now covered up everything we just did on that adjustment layer. And then we're gonna go over to our brush, a white brush, and we are just going to paint the face back in to get that green face. I know it seems counterproductive, but let's put that green face back on okay so once you're happy with all of your edges and everything is is pretty good then all we have to do is go over to opacity and we are just going to slide this down and as we slide it down we are taking away how much green we have if we take it all the way down that's our original image and if we slide it up then we're kind of adding green back in so for me, it's probably somewhere around there. That looks pretty good. Now, I'm actually gonna go down to uh, adjustment layers again, and I'm gonna add that curves onto the top. I'm just gonna click a couple dots. I'm gonna make sure this one's up a little. This one's down just a touch to add some contrast to the image. And you can see this time I'm doing it to the whole image just at the end, just to add a little punch to it. And if you really wanna to check to see the difference, we can go to layer and duplicate layer to our original background copy, and then drag it up to the top. And then you can just click on this eyeball to toggle between before and after. So that's what we started with. 
and that's what we ended with. So that's it. That's how you do a quick face swap in Photoshop using two different ways to match skin tones. If you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you next time.